I think I'm ready to read Umineko no Naku Koroni again. Yeah. Yeah, I should be about back and ready. Basically. I tested a reading earlier, and I don't I don't think it was too bad, so I should be good. Oh, I'm no longer gonna like show the the Twitch chats. Because I downloaded Twitch and stopped being lazy, so on my phone I'll see when people are talking to me. And then I'll just track the comments from there. Yep, I stopped being lazy. Because I'm very lazy. Alright. Let's pick up from where we left off. Sorry, I haven't been made up for it. Getting sick really fucks me up. Well, this was a really tough one. Anyway, let's continue. And then you see, we'll set it up so that among the works entered in Company X's mystery novel contest, yet another one of the great Hachijo's works will appear under a false name. Of course, they're among the bomb with a movie version, and a TV drama bundled in. We here at Company X would be honored to accept your manuscript. And I'm getting prize money out of this. But of course! The 10 million yen prize for the company X's first mystery novel contest will all go to you! And much more besides! Splendid. You've caught my interest. That's why I've decided not to write up a manuscript for you. What?! M Madame Hachijo! Why?! Everything had seemed to be going so smoothly up until then, so this sudden refusal made the people from the publishing company fall over in their sofa. This little scheme of yours is far more interesting than the manuscript I wrote. In that case, it wouldn't be fitting to hand it over to you. It was always a worthless story. I wanted to lure my ignorant readers into lauding it, making them feel as though they performed some magnificent reasoning. I was hoping that you children of men would recognize the irony and laugh at your own mistake. But it looks like you've taken it seriously. Yes, I can say I'm ashamed of my own failure as a writer. Oh, uh, of course not! Please, forgive us! Please, let us use your- I have no need for money, but some pet food would be nice. Pet food? Oh, for your cat! There was a rumor that you had a cat who liked dry plums. Yes, yes, as you wish. Quickly, let's have a high-quality assortment of dry plums brought in here. <laughs> Burn Castle. She only eats the ones that are packaged separately at 200 yen apiece. At this rate, she'll die of high blood pressure. She snacks on kimchi and spicy miso all the time, too. Really? There must be something wrong with that cat's tongue. Oh, wow, look at the Higurashi reference here. <laughs> Me. The cat meowed in an objection from where it laid on the top of the bookshelf. I cannot give you this manuscript. Why do I write up a new one for your company's contest? However, I won't write it under my name. It's estimated that thousands of manuscripts will be sent in for your contest. If you manage to pick out mine from the pack. And if you also find it easier than the deserving prize. Oops, let's read that again. I cannot give you this manuscript, but why don't I write up a new one for your company's contest? However, I won't write it under my name. It's estimated thousands of manuscripts will be sent in for your contest. If you manage to pick out mine from the pack, and if you also find it deserving of the prize, then I'd be happy to continue our discussion just now. How does that sound? <laughs> Just the honor of receiving your manuscript is more than enough! You people truly are amusing, fawning, and cringing all the time. But I've grown weary of this for today. Leave now. Meeting with children and men can be so tiring. <laughs> uh, we're deeply grateful for your kindness in allowing us in this meeting! A servant guided the people from the publishing company to the door. In the study that was now finally quiet, Hachijo Toy let out a sigh, slumped down on the sofa, and gazed at the ceiling. It is tiring, 
but the stimulation of talking with a child of man isn't such a bad thing in small doses. It's good for you to talk to people every now and then. You'll go senile if you stay shut in all the time. Oops, sorry, that was probably Burncastle. Erm, um, hold on. We'll see, okay. The black cat left from the bookshelf and landed softly on the carpet. Oh! Oh, okay. Yeah, I interpreted that incorrectly. I'm sorry. My bad. Let me just go into the backlog. It's good for you to talk to people every now and then. You'll go see now if you stay and shut all the time. Oh. And then from its form, silently twisted and became that of Burncastle. Indeed. They certainly can be entertaining. Inviting them over now and then may go a long way toward alleviating my boredom. At any rate, I think I will write that manuscript when I feel like it. It sounds like they'll even bring a gift for you. What is this all about pet food? How rude. Well, that's what it is. Here. Hachiya picked up a jar from a shelf and then took out a dried plum out and threw it into the air. You know... Okay, this is completely unrelated to the reading, but the fact that Burncastle likes dried plums, can I make an Uso Gooey reference to Bakumadurame? I don't know, has anybody read the manga? I just wanted to talk about that, since a mutual of mine on Twitter got me into it. I'm currently on the 64th chapter. Anyway. In an instant, Burncastle turned back into a black cat and caught it in midair and started munching away. Madame Hachijo, your guests have departed. A servant knocked on the door before making this announcement. Thank you. Let me know if that one wakes up. As you wish. Would you like some tea? No. I'm going to write for a bit. Please do not disturb me. Yes, ma'am. Man, I wish I had lived the Hachijo life. <laughs> After waiting for the servant's footsteps to disappear into the distance, Hachijo moved to her seat. The desk certainly looked as though it belonged to a great writer with pages of manuscripts scattered across it. Even though the century's almost over, you s wait. Even though the century's almost over, you still write with a pen. Oops, that's Angie's voice. My bad. Even though the century's almost over, you still write with a pen. Black Axe spoke as it tore the dry plum apart with its mouth. Tales are meant to be written with ink. To me, that is an unbreakable rule. So you write it once with ink and type the whole thing over again with a keyboard. Pretty stupid, doing the same thing twice. In that case, why does a child of man draw up a tale in their mind and spit the whole thing out again on a keyboard? How foolish of them to do the same thing twice. Look at it that way. You're doing the same three, three times. <laughs> that was a good one. Even as Hachijo laughed, her fountain pen was already sliding across the page. Beautiful letters appeared almost as fast and proficiently as a typewriter. Only humans called her creations manuscripts. With her fountain pen and writing paper, she was creating a world. As she did, the hands of the clock would spin around like a top. The light and shadows that came in through the window changed their angle so fast they might have been the hands of the clock themselves. Slowly, she drew a large X across the tightly packed words on paper. Having trouble. I can't draw it out well. Writing a manuscript to please people is truly a pain. After all, I don't usually write for other people to read. You should try writing down whatever it is you're saying on that manuscript paper. Burncastle's curled up on the sofa, a mocking smile on her face. Normally, when Hachijo was writing, Burncastle would never let herself be noticed, much less talk to her. However, Burncastle realized that the other was apparently getting bored with her manuscript, so she yawned and started talking. What isn't your writing anyway? A tale to give to a child of man. Which child of man? It is a tale I promised to write for the Miko who once read for me. 
Uh, you're still running that. I can't think of anything to write that would give her satisfaction. Looks like Ao Ao is giving up yet again. You always promise to write a story then get stuck before you're finished and give up. If I had given up, I wouldn't be worrying it over like this. Then there's only one tale that Angie's wanted from the beginning. The tale of the single truth. Angie said she wanted to know what happened that day. No matter how many tales you write destroying the truth, she'll never be satisfied. And yet, I do think my tales are far more interesting than the single truth. Angie doesn't want to read an interesting tale. I promised that child that I would write a tale for her sake, so I'm writing a tale to please her. No matter how interesting or uninteresting it is, everything you write is an illusion. Angie doesn't want any of that. Haven't you figured that out yet? The Book of the Single Truth was written by Ushiro Miyaeva. Hidden amongst a pile of writing paper was Ava's diary. Furthermore, the one who wrote this passed away without revealing it to anyone. Being the humble writer that I am, I would like to respect that. Don't make me laugh. Is this coming from the person who entertains herself by taking a tail and tearing out its guts? The truth is uninteresting. Is that your opinion after tearing apart the guts of so many tails? You might as well say that. With a self-mocking laugh, Hachijo set down her fountain pen. I certainly have age. The first thing age taught me was that not knowing is more precious than knowing. That definitely sounds like something an old person would say, but I'll bite. What do you mean? Knowing and not knowing. These two things have a one-way relationship. True. It's possible to switch from not knowing to knowing. But you can't do it the other way around. When I realized that, I saw the noble purity resembling virginity that exists in not knowing. In my attempts to escape boredom, I've torn apart and eaten the guts as of many games and tales as there are stars in the sky. But always, my relief from boredom is short-lived. It is also fleeting that I have started to ignore each tale as an individual story. That's right. If you eat a cat, then you only get to enjoy it for one night. But if you let it live, it might start calling you names and getting sarcastic. Indeed. Even the annoying way they break into your sweet's cupboard or sneak into your bed can be part of their charm. Hachijo looked around at the books covering every square inch of the room, and then softly petted the cat's back. I might have been able to enjoy a single tale much longer and much more deeply. As I have eaten my way through countless tales to escape boredom, I haven't really been eating them. I've just been killing them. And in the end, they'll kill me back. Hachijo laughed with self derision. Even in Beato's game, you tried to tear the guts out. I just wanted to check my answers. I did try to do it in a way that respected Beatrice, the weaver of his tale. Yeah, I think it was pretty well read. All done so that people who didn't understand wouldn't figure it out. Will it make for a better tale if Angie learns the truth, or if she doesn't? To be honest, I don't know anymore. So fully aware that you'll scorn me for it. But I decided to stop writing the rest of this tale. What do you mean? I won't write it. I will merely record it. The tale that Ushiromiya Angie leaves herself. So you're going to do that sort of thing again? After growing tired of a thousand years of life, I've decided that choosing not to know the truth is the more noble path. However, I now see that it isn't fair to force my opinion on Angie, who hasn't even lived a hundred years. So you're going to leave it in Angie's care? Yes. I'll silently record it as it plays out. If you're leaving it to Angie, then the rest of this tale is pretty much set in stone, right? So it would seem. Let it be so. After all, in the end, a tale that a child of man weaves for herself will be far more fun than any story I could create. 
In that case, why don't you lend a hand in Angie's tale? You've already given yourself a role in it, haven't you? Hmm. So, is it my role to bring this tale to its conclusion? Come on. That's no way for someone in Banjo's game to talk. It's your job to tear the guts out of the cat box. Hachijo chuckled, pushed aside the pile of writing paper, and picked up the book of the single truth. Then she opened a locked drawer. That is what Angie desires. Perhaps this book's seal is fated to be broken. Angie will reach the single truth. The single truth will break the seal in the cat box. And everything will be exposed to the light of day. And so, all those countless message bots and fragments made out of delightful imaginings, which might have been scattered across the ocean of the internet, will fade away like foam on the sea. After all, even that person is surely tired of such fragments. It's about time for that kid's journey to end, too. Yes, let us accept this task. As our role demands, let's give this journey an end of the line. At the moment, there were sounds of someone in the hallway. The instant someone knocked on the door, Vern Castle turned back into a black cat. Madame Hachijo, please forgive me for interrupting. It was the voice of Hachijo's servant. What is it? If it's a phone call, tell them I'm busy. It isn't that. Toya has woken up. Thank you. Prepare a light meal. Enough for the two of us. As you wish. Hachijo stood up. She shut the the drawer. Oh, she then shut the open drawer and locked it again. Inside the drawer lay a glittering golden key. Repeat it! The definition of a closed room prevents all varieties of exiting and entering. I refuse! By definition, it's impossible for a closed room murder to take place inside a perfect closed room. The chain might have been repaired after it was destroyed. The door might have been repaired after it was destroyed. The wall might have been repaired after it was destroyed. My closed room doesn't involve anything being repaired. Good! This really is getting fun, Battler. Sorry, I don't have time to play with you right now. I'm sorry too, but as a fellow witch of truth, I can't let you get in the way of Angie's way. Come to think of it, you're a witch of truth too, aren't you? I guess that makes you a sort of mentor to Angie. The single truth! It is supreme! The ultimate! Only a witch of truth can break down all the barriers that stand between her and that truth! Is this single truth of yours really so important? There are lots of things in this world that aren't worth knowing. How important is 1986 to Angie, really? It isn't important at all! <laughs> You're probably right. No matter what happened or didn't happen in 1986, it won't change anything for Angie living in 1998. There's no point in learning that truth. However, there's just one thing that will change. What's that? How she lives! Erica turns from her reasoning to a scythe's blade and lashed out at Valor over and over. Valor also created a blade from his reasoning and attacked Erica over and over. In the middle of all this, he questioned Erica, the girl, who, like Angie, who called herself a woman of truth. So what is the point of exposing the truth? You're right. Knowing often changes how a person lives her life. In that case, I have one hope as her blood relative. I hope that at the end of my game, she finds a better way to live her life. Knowing may change how people live, but not always in a good direction. There are plenty of things in this world that you'd be better comfortable off not knowing. The number of ticks living in the seat on the train. Those urban legends about nasty stuff in the tap water. The world's full of things that you're better off not knowing. The Book of the Single Truth can probably teach Angie what happened on this island, but what's the point of her knowing that? Oops, I'm sorry. The Book of the Single Truth probably can teach Angie what happened on this island. What's the point of her knowing that? It'll just increase the sadness she's felt for 12 years. I'm 
many more years will it take for her to find happiness as an ordinary girl? How many years will it take for her wounds to be healed? Angie's desire to find the truth is hurting her, regardless of what the truth actually is. Though her deep wounds were slow to heal, they did begin to do so during those 12 years. However, Angie kept on picking at the scabs. In her search for the truth, she tore at those wounds herself, opening them up once more. It's time for Angie to be free of the sadness of 1986. That's what all of us Ushiro and Mia's prayed for! Who cares about that? The truth is everything! The truth is justice! It's a disease everyone gets at least once, usually in middle school. They just love to find out all those things that adults are hiding. But don't you think it's fun to expose things like that? Yeah, totally. Reading dirty books would nearly be so fun if you didn't have to do so in secret. I deny all your blue wedges with the red truth. Now the methods you suggest could defeat my closed room. Angie was breathing heavily. The book of a single truth was right before her eyes. If she could just defeat Bayonne, she'd be able to take the book to Burn Castle. Then she could read what was inside. Even though the truth of the final family conference on October 4th and 5th of 1986 was right there, the Golden Witch stood in her way. Her anger and hatred spun around inside her head, wiping out the composure necessary to theory me. And she shook her head several times, clearing away everything that got in the way of calming her mind. However, no matter how many times she got it through, the closed room sealing her in the chapel was perfect. Angie wasn't particularly familiar with the mystery genre. However, she knew all about the fragments containing Beato's games so far. Her knowledge was shallow, but it would still have been enough to give her a good foothold. However, no matter how many blue trees she shot at Beato, none of them even made the witch flinch. Beato just blew them apart with a red tree, an elegant wave of her kite. It's about time you gave up. I don't even view this as a game between the two of us. Are you implying that I could never solve this puzzle? I'm just buying time until Valor finishes dealing with Erica. He's the only one who can bring you to your senses. Bring me to my senses. You're the ones making me do this by hiding the single truth. That's why I'm fighting you. This is my right. As the final member of the Ushiromiya family, I have a right to know the truth. Indeed. And that is the purpose of this final game. That's right. Without this final game, I wouldn't have been given a chance to reach the truth. At least for that one thing, I'm grateful. But as for what happened in 1986, as for who took your relatives and your family away from you, as a human, your desire to know the truth is quite natural. However, even knowing this, Valor decided that it would be best if you didn't return to 1986. I know what Onichan's trying to say! He's telling me to look to the future and live instead of being stuck in the past, right? Correct. Valor wanted to use this final game to show you that. In that case, there's no need to keep waiting for my answer! The answer's no, Golden Witch! I died back in 1986. I wander about like a ghost for 12 years since then. And when Aunt Ava died, I lost my only reason to stick around this earth as a ghost. That's why I decided to do one last thing before ending my life! And that thing is learning the truth of 1986. Yeah! A problem with that? Of course I do, you foolish girl. So, if you do reach the truth, you'll die. In that case, I can't let you have it. I must trick you and blind you as much as I can to keep you alive. Valor wants you to live. Living with that truth is no better than dying. I'm trying to find the truth so I can live. You just admitted that you were searching for the truth so you could die. Yeah, that's right. And let me rephrase that. I'm trying to find the truth so I can die. I offered up my life when I made the contract with Burn Castle could learn what happened that day. That single truth would be the souvenir that I take with me to hell. It's useless. You cannot break this closed room. This closed room is perfect. And yet I will kill you in this closed room. She had tried every theory, every idea, and every bit of nonsense she could think of. However, none of it had any effect on Banta. Powerless and frustrated, 
with the book of the single truth right before her eyes, and she bit her lower lip. At first, this was supposed to be a game in which you were given a key. A key that would let you decide your future. Liar! You wanted to hide the truth of this shackle and make me choose a door that leads to some optimistic future. That's not a choice! You're trying to decide for me! Parents have the right to prevent their children from making unsuitable choices. I'm not a kid! I'm an 18 year old woman who can think it out for herself! Fool! You're just a six year old girl who can't think of anything except the past. And whose fault is that? Because of you! I've been stuck as a six year old all this time! It's time for me to tear apart your illusions covering the truth! Yes. Now that I think about it, it's not the shackle that you locked me inside. Since that day in 1986, for all these years when you had me locked away in a closed room where I'm all alone and where no one will tell me the truth! Now, I'll tear apart your closed room with my own hands! Yeah, it's useless. It's all useless. I know the trick to your perfect closed room. Repeat it! You murdered me immediately after shutting me into this closed room! I refuse. Of course, you've been killing me for 18 years. Thanks, Beatrice. If you hadn't reminded me, I wouldn't have figured out the trick. Angie, you are young and you have a long future ahead of you. In fact, you are the golden witch who lives in the future, are you not? Then live on in the future. Just how much our past truths really were. But they pale in comparison to the truth of the future. The truth that you'll create yourself. My life is trash. My whole family died, leaving just me behind why I'm going back to them once I've gotten my single truth. If you learn the truth, you'll just have to accept your family's deaths. Did you ever thought about living on hoping that by some miracle, one of them might have survived, and that someday you might get a chance to see them again? I'm not worried about that. Even the Witch of Miracles couldn't find a fragment like that. The end of the Rokinjima explosion. Almost none of the families remained from recovery. Some days, hope that this might be a sign that they had escaped the explosion and survived. That hope gave me the strength to live on. However, that hope wasn't strong enough to support me for 12 long years. So even though I wanted to know the truth, I unconsciously averted my eyes. I felt that learning of my family's death for certain would force me to deny any possibility of someone miraculously surviving. I'm tired of living on and on with nothing but the impossible hope of a miracle to keep me going. That's why I decided to accept my family's death. I decided to accept the truth no matter what it is. That's why I became a witch of truth! How foolish to be blinded by the truth of the past and not able to see one's own future. Forgive me, Beth. I was not strong enough to guide your sister properly. A blazing blue wedge appeared in the engine hand. It was long, thick, and shaped like a spear. This is the end, which is 1986. This closed room is perfect, therefore I can't get out. You can't lay a finger on me from the outside. However, you locked me into this room, so we can say you killed me with this simple trick. You shut me in this perfect closed room and made me starve to death. Since you intentionally did this, it's totally fair to say that this is a closed room murder with you as the killer. It looks like being overly vague with the cause of death backfired on you. So long, Witch of Illusion. Stained glass window behind her, Beato spread her arms and let the spear of the blue truth pierce her. The blue spear seemed to crucify Beato against the windows. <sighs> Game set. So, this is on Ava's diary, the book of a single truth. And she picked up the book from where it lay on its altar and sealed in crystal. If you read that, then by your contract with Bryn Castle, you will die. Learning the truth just to die. Ridiculous! That's right. I'm looking for the truth so I can die. At least let me choose how I go. I'm not an idiot. I know the real me is still floating in that starry sky. Her castle acknowledged me as the final Beatrice and invited me on a journey to learn the truth of 1986. I won't be able to return here again. But her castle told me that. I walked off the roof into the back of the black sky. 
Darn it, I messed up. When the castle told me that and walked off the roof into the black sky, I followed her into the empty air. That was Contra. I wanted two things from Burn Castle. One was for someone from my family to come back. The other was revenge. I wanted to destroy the illusion of the witch that hid the events of that day. I wanted to reach the truth. However, the first of my wishes were couldn't come true. After all, even the Witch of Miracles couldn't find a fragment where my family came home. So she wordlessly questioned me. She told me I couldn't reach the truth unless I had the courage to end this worthless life. Where I live like a ghost, hoping someone might come back. So she walked out into the open air and I followed her. Yes, now I can understand. When I offered to trade away my life, I made one wish and gave up on another. I wished for revenge against the illusion hiding the truth. And now, I succeeded in that revenge, defeating the master of that illusion, and obtained the book of a single truth. What I gave up was my naivety, and continued believing that someone from my family might come back. And now, I can accept that my entire family is dead. Can you make someone alive just because no one knows any different? These cat boxes you talk about are just naive delusions. The idea that a corpse can live as long as you keep it hidden. But even if you hide a corpse, it's still dead! Do you really think you can heal my wounds by saying they'll always be watching over me from the clouds like some kind of fairy tale? I'm Angie Beatrice, a witch of truth! I'll free myself from my life as a ghost, waiting for a miracle that'll never happen! I'll end my life as a noble manor who's reached the truth! Didn't you once come to understand the power of magic through Maria's grimoire? Yeah. I understood it. I despair when I realize how powerless it was. That's what Nietzsche is trying to force me to use now, isn't it? If I believe, if I use magic, then my family will always be by my side. Don't take me for a fool! You think that kind of magic, an illusion, a daydream can heal those 12 years? And how am I supposed to go on for decades and decades into the future? Someone, come back to me! Someone! But no one's coming back! So at least tell me what happened that day! But Castle said she'd tell me! My master, I have the book of the single truth! I'll take it back to you, so give me the truth! For so long I prepared to throw away my naive hopes for a miracle! Now tell me the truth of that day! A blinding light poured out of the chapel. It seeped from the windows and the cracks of the door, even reaching as far as Balor and Erica's eyes. What? It seems Comrade Angie has completed her task. It looks like you set up some pathetic seal, but to my master, that'll be easier than thawing frozen sorry fish. D damn Master said I could play with you until Angie finished her task. I had enough fun from this reunion, so I think it's time for me to leave. Erica gave an elegant curtsy. Why'd you talk Angie to looking for a single truth? Your master must know! That truth doesn't mean anything to Angie! Yes, all truths in this world are meaningless. In the end, meaning comes from the mind of each individual human. Even when there is a single truth, it can mean different things to different people. The truth has no meaning in itself. There's just one reason why I'm still stuck on the truth despite it all. Because you're the detective. Good. But Angie isn't a detective. To her, the truth itself is the finish line. A way to mark the end of her unhappy life. Now she's finally finished the final purification ceremony. She's a one-night witch of truth focused on learning on a certain single truth before she dies. A temporary witch for a short time until she slams against the ground. I won't let Angie die. No matter how tough it gets, she has to live. That's the only thing all of us want! If she lives, all sorts of magic and miracles would be possible! If only you put up your arm around her shoulder and told her that directly, you might not have lost. What do you think? Just by hearing you howl, this level of reasoning is possible for Furno Erica! Live! Angie! He yelled toward the chapel. But Angie probably wasn't even there anymore. Balor's yell was swallowed up 
by an empty pitch black sky and the sea of rampaging goats. Comrade Ava, our mission is complete. Let's withdraw. Oh! Are we done already? And I was just about to tear the island apart with my own Ava culprit theory. Ava appeared in midair and cackled. Sorry, battler. That I wasn't strong enough. For 12 years, I protected that kid in my own way. I'm grateful. However, she's decided this for herself. She's 18 years old now. Don't you think people should decide how they live their own lives? Sorry for being a doting big brother. Later. I'm Lady Burncastle's peace at the moment. It's time for me to go. I'll see you later, Comrade Ava. Ava held her palm open, and a small pointy blue fragment appeared there. The, fa the fragment burst with a blinding flash of light. Ava vanished. It was the same light that seeped out of the chapel earlier. Nieces cannot leave the game board. However, Voyager witches alone can come and go. This is probably some sort of magic that Burn Castle had given them. Erica opened her palm as well. The same sort of fragment appeared there. That's enough for now, I think. Who knows? This might be the last time we meet. Wait. We haven't solved our fight yet. If he could steal the fragment in Erica's hand, he'd be able to go where Burn Castle was. The seal surrounding the Book of the Single Truth would probably be melted easily with Burn Castle's power. However, even so, it would take her some time. If he could steal that fragment, he would have a chance of bringing Angie back. What is there to settle? Time's up. However, if you feel like taking one last hit, I'd be happy to oblige. Valor had known that Erica wouldn't be able to resist the challenge. After all, he already knew what her trick was. He figured it out just a second ago. Even while he spoke with Erica, he'd been thinking about it inside his mind. He could finish her with this last strike and take the fragment. Let's go, Erica. This will decide it. This clash will be the last before I go. So go ahead and give me the craziest of your hilarious theories. Your closed room definitions state that the walls, windows, floor, ceiling, and chains were all unbeatable. However, there was one possibility that I didn't check because it was too ridiculous. And that was whether or not the chain could be set from the outside. <laughs> Blue truth, this answer to your closed room, the length of the chain. The chain for your clothes room was extra long, so it's possible to set and unset it from outside the room. What a ridiculous answer. However, if you blindly assume that a lock made by an unbreakable chain makes a clothes room unbeatable, then this truly would be a perfect clothes room. The blue wedge flung from Balor's hand plunged straight to Erica's chest. As she winced in pain, her hand shook. The fragment she held flew in the air. Your clothes room definitions say that the walls, windows, door, floor, and chain were all unbeatable. However, there wasn't there one really ridiculous thing missing. Blue truth! Your closed room had no ceiling, so it's possible to enter by climbing over the wall! Erica's blue side swung out from behind her back, catching Balor in the side as he stretched his hand out toward the fragment. Balor's hand didn't reach it. The fragment returned to Erica's hand once more. It looks like our tricks were equally ridiculous. The mystery nuts would have been furious, don't you think? But I disagree. To me, the process of exposing that ridiculousness is ecstasy! That's why I'm through to Erica the detective! Damn it. You figured out the answer a while back, didn't you? Not true! I thought it up between the time you let loose your blue truth and the time that you stretched your hand out to grab the fragment. I've just been buying time since the beginning. I only started reasoning a second ago. Erica broke the crystal barrier that surrounded them. Then she flew high up into the sky, looking down on Valor, laughing at him as she gave a final bow. So long, Paddler! Even if this has only been my only time to shine, even if I outlive my usefulness and am about to be thrown back into the depths of oblivion, even so, I have no regrets. Wait! like she'd actually wait because I told her to. With a blinding flash, Erica vanished. 
and she had retrieved the Book of the Single Truth and returned to Burn Castle. Val and the others had no way to leave the game world. Everything had come to an end. A gold butterfly flitted by, and Beato appeared. My apologies, Battler. I let Angie get away. I'm sorry, too. We let them escape. It's all over. Valor had created this game for Angie. Now that Angie was gone, the game board had no longer any purpose. And even if that hadn't been the case, the game board itself had been chewed to bits by goats and was now like a single leaf floating in the sea of nothingness. Thanks to Gertrude and Cornelia's seals, the mansion was protected from the second floor up. The door to the golden land was now open wide enough for a child to slip through. The smaller people like Madia and Sakutara went through it. My friend, I believe the door is opening at a quicker pace. Indeed, to my eyes as well, it seems to be so. F Father, is the door open yet? It looks like they're about to break it through the windows. Kraus, there is no need for you to fear. An Eastern Jungfrau barrier is not so easily broken. Very soon it'll be big enough for adults to go through, too. Don't worry, we'll make it in time. But there's knocking and banging everywhere and... Stay calm and wait. After all, there is nothing else we can do. Even the outer walls of the mansion were covered with goats as they are plunging their fangs and fists into the walls, windows, and trying to crush them. So anyone watching the goats stuck to all the windows in the hallway, smashing their thick arms against the windows, couldn't help but be terrified, even if they knew about the barrier. However, anyone watching the group of goats get at the top of the big staircase on the other side of the barrier would probably feel a different emotion. Rather than terror, it was a sad, empty sort of emotion. The barrier was drawn across the landing at the top of the hall's great staircase. Beyond that barrier, everything had already been eaten away. Was it even possible for those who stood in this hallway of the upper floors to believe that this was the Rokinjima Mansion? By now, no one looking at the scene would be able to imagine such a thing. Forget the hall or even the whole first floor. Even the ground itself was almost gone. The sea of goats had eaten everything apart long before this. They had eaten apart the hall, the pillars of the mansion, the floor, the ground, the sea, the very concept of the island, every part of the game board Valor had created. And now only the leftover was the upper part of the mansion which floated along in empty space. How pitiful. To what do you refer? The goats and their eagerness to chew this island apart have eaten up the ground they stood on, dropping themselves into nothingness. This has once been a huge entrance hall. Beyond it had been a vast rose garden. There have been so many places to stand on. However, now, holes have been dug up everywhere. Nearly everything outside the mansion was completely gone. Some goats were clutching to a few remaining footholds and pillars, still eating away at them. Let me know that exposing the truth is murder. Why can't humans live without killing, I wonder? Throughout their long history, so many have prayed for miracles, but in the end, they eat up their own chances of receiving them, eating up the very ground they stand on, and falling into the abyss. They saw a goat chewing the same pillar that it was holding up, which unsurprisingly fell into the empty blackness along with the goat. Humans are... Sad creatures, fade to live in order to learn. Oh wait, that was Leon's line. Humans are sad creatures, fade to live in order to learn. If learning means eating away at the same hopes and dreams that keep you alive, that would mean humans are born just so that they can die. We're taught that we have to live. However, almost everything that we accomplish in life ends up killing us. Don't think about it. You'll just get a headache. As a single human, 
I want to ask, is learning a sin? Is living in ignorance the only way that we can have hopes and dreams? Both living with knowledge and living in ignorance have their benefits as well as their shortcomings. You're even free to choose which path you take. That's what makes humans powerless. While people can learn, they cannot unlearn. And so the all-knowing God has stepped in for the sake of humans who cannot unlearn, marking out things that should be learned and things that should not be learned. Too much curiosity can kill your hopes and dreams. Humans are pitiable beings who are unable to simply avoid those things which should not be learned. Lord Battler can hardly be blamed for failing to teach Angie this. And now Angie's gone. This game is over. Struck down by Will's words, everyone fell silent. Sorry, let me read that as Will then. And now Angie's gone. This game is over. Only the sound of goats eating everything rang... Oops, I'm sorry. Only the sounds of goats eating everything away rang out hollowly. Oops. Rang out hollowly. Let's try again at least at that part. Even if they escaped to the Golden Land, the goats of emptiness would probably chew into that realm as well. Even if they got away for the time being, nothing would be resolved. It was all set in stone now. They had no way to resist the future's violent attempts to tear apart the cat box of the past open. In that case, we must stay alive. If a human's foolishness makes them throw away their own hopes and dreams in the end, and I want to believe in those things until the last second. Your resolve is impressive. I'm the one hope held by Beatrice of a million worlds. So even at times like this, I have to be everyone's hope. I'm not giving up on this game yet. By which you mean? I'll keep waiting, believing in a miracle until the last second. So you'll keep struggling on and on until it's all over. That's right! After all, last time when we were surrounded by that pack of terrifying cats, we prepared for death, weren't we? But Landa Delta saved us! If we had given up, if we had had the strength to believe in a miracle, then I'm sure we would have been erased before help would come. Well, it's not like I really saved you. More like Burn just failed to kill you properly. Or it might have been some kind of whim of hers. A miraculous whim from the Witch of Miracles. <laughs> How long has she been there? Lambda Delta was leaning on a handrail of the staircase, eating popcorn. She held the cup of popcorn out, but Liam declined the offer. Balor told us. He said Angie made a contract by which she would learn the truth in exchange for her own life. Going by your conversation just now, that was no contract. After all, living and seeking the truth so that they can die is what humans do anyway, right? In other words, Angie has spent all of her life trying to learn the truth. All Burn did was shorten that time to a single instant. When Angie lost her hopes and dreams, she stopped valuing her own life. How could she be given hopes and dreams again? Can we then help her find a reason for living? Are you asking me? I'm paper, right? Double twisted curly super paper. I don't understand complicated stuff. After tossing the last bit of popcorn into her mouth, Lambda Delta threw the empty cup into the abyss of nothingness. Brim wasn't really pushing that kid to do something she didn't want. She was giving Angie a chance, or should I call it a choice? Then Angie made the choice she wanted, appeared in the game board, and now, in her game against Battler, she's making her own choices again. From start to finish, Angie's game has always belonged to Angie. Right now, I'm just a casual observer. So not a particularly enthusiastic observer. Maybe. It's a play with an obvious ending. So I've decided I might as well take my lead. You mean you'll stop watching a play just because you think you know how it'll end? Even though it might reach a climax you didn't expect. Lambda Delta licked her salty fingers. Then she stared at Leon challengingly and grinned. I know that Angie's game will end this way. I know Balor's feelings will reach her. 
She'll understand that he wants her to live in a better future, and she'll choose that future of her own accord. I'm certain that's how this tale will end. Huh? Are you talking to me, the Witch of Certainty, and saying that that outcome is certain? That's right. I guarantee it. Angie's game won't end like this. So please don't leave your seat. You won't leave either. There must be something we can do. And... Sorry, there was a car driving by. It sounded really low, and it really pissed me off. Let's try that again. Do you hear that, car? Do you really need to be here that long? Shut the hell up already! Alright, I'm sorry. I hate cars. That's right. I guarantee it. And she's game won't end like this. So please don't leave your seat. We won't leave either. There must be something we can do, and that will surely lead her to a better future. This tale will definitely have a happy ending. So keep watching until the end. I beg you. Even though I already announced as the Witch of Certainty that this tale will have a happy ending, the definition of a happy ending is something everyone watching gets to decide for themselves, right? For a while, there was a tense silence. With a confident gaze that seemed to be saying, Are you serious? Lambda Delta stared at Leon. However, Leon's eyes didn't even twitch. For some time, they both stared into each other's eyes without flinching. Ha! <laughs> Suddenly, Lambda Delta let out a large sigh and stretched. Let's try again. <sighs> Suddenly, Lambda Delta let out a large sigh and stretch. Well, I have nowhere better to be. Sure, I'll stick around a bit longer. If you get me some more popcorn, that is. I'm feeling like caramel flavor this time. If you come to the Golden Land, we'll serve you as much as you like. Lambda Delta waved at them with a thin smile. No one was quite sure what this meant, but it apparently signified her surrender in her own way. Okay, if you guarantee your own flavor of happy ending with certainty, then I, the Great Lambda Delta, will stick around for a while longer. See how big my heart is? It's as wide as Lake Biwa. That's pretty thin, actually. And as gentle as the Sea of Japan! That is a very rough sea. Please allow us to speak. It would seem that she meant the other way around. There was some muffled laughter. Lambda Delta is a witch who gives strength to those who possess unshakable willpower. Leon believed in a happy ending that certain those lose. Leon believed in a happy ending, and that certain enthusiasm might have been enough to earn a small miracle from Lambda. You better not let me get bored, okay? If you do, I'll leave right away. Of course. I'm sure Balor will be welcome. Of course. I'm sure Balor will be glad to welcome you as well. Leon understood. In order to fight get that. Why do I keep messing? Why did I mess up all of a sudden? I'm getting mad. In order to fight back against Burn Castle, who had taken Angie outside the board, they would need the power of another who was capable of leaving the board. Their last hope was to make sure Lana Delta didn't abandon this game. However, judging by Lana Delta's expression as she hummed to herself, oops, however, judging by Lana Delta's expression as she hummed to herself cheerily, actually asking her for help was probably going to be a problem. Look, Sapar! Everything but the first floor down is gone! What a spectacle! Not a sight you see every day! How matters have progress how have matters progressed upstairs? Alright! We came here to tell you that! Hey everyone, sorry to keep you waiting! They say the door to the Golden Land has opened! Finally. Let us go. This place will not be safe for long. Everyone who had been sitting on the staircase got up. I guess this is goodbye, Broken Jima the Beautiful. True. It may be a shadow of its former self. But this is the last time we'll see it, isn't it? <laughs> What's with that gloomy attitude? Come on! Show me, okay? Let's see a happy ending! By the way, if you ever read the memoirs, 
that or what was it? It was an extra tip that Lam that's through Lana Delsa's perspective, where she talks to Sayo and stuff. There is a parallel with Sayo and Liam. Isn't that great? I love that. It's one of my 